I think we're looking at a whole new landscape opening up in electronics. There's a misconception that graphene might replace silicon. That's not the point. Uh, epitaxial graphene or graphene electronics will not replace it, but will be basically an other electronic material. And so don't look for a replacement of silicon. Look for new devices that can do something really special, and that's what you will have your graphene for. And I think in the next couple of years, what we're going to see is some specialty devices, probably within two years, in fact, very high frequency devices made for electronics, for com communication, perhaps, or other things like that. And slowly, it's going to find its way into consumer electronics. But I think that's going to take another maybe 10 years before you will have your first graphene electronics device. And it's going to be doing something really special. You know, it's very difficult to predict it outward from here, uh, exactly what kind of things we're going to be looking for. But I'm pretty sure the general um, uh, common denominator is going to be very high speed. So it's going to be things that are going to be running in the excess of 500 gigahertz up to 1,000 gigahertz. I suspect that's what we're going to see relatively soon. I think it's going to be used perhaps for communications. I think that's where the first time we're going to see this kind of graphene device is used. And, um, and then ultimately, maybe very specialized computers that, uh, you know, but you know how it goes. The prices will go down, uh, uh, we'll learn how to do it. And maybe by 2020, uh, it will be when you have your, your laptop computer will have graphene in there, but you know, your, your pocket calculator, something that does not have to go so fast, will be made out of silicon. The important thing here is that, that graphene has just started uh, to come alive. And, the possibilities are really endless.